Kamala and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special as we bring you the ease of doing business town hall here from the national capital region. I'm Shireen Bhan. We've got a great audience here with us, people who believe in India, who have decided to put their money where their mouth is and bet on India. Investors here from the US, from Singapore, Israel, China, UK, Russia, the list is long and the investors are distinguished. The big headline, of course, coming in from the World Bank where India has jumped 30 spots to emerge at the number 100 position on the ease of doing business index. The attempt, the effort and the aim is now to break into the top 50. The team that's going to be spearheading those efforts join us here today, the DIPP Secretary Ramesh Abhishek and also the young team from Invest India led very ably by their CEO Deepak Bagla. Well, a big round of applause to, to each of you gentlemen and to your teams for ensuring that we've broken into the top 100 on the Ease of Doing Business Index. Ms. Abhishek, let me start by asking you, sir. As I said, it's Mission 50 now as far as the DIPP and the government is concerned. Yesterday in my conversation with the Commerce Minister, he said, I've put the DIPP in charge of putting forward a new industrial policy, which means that we're going to do away with a whole bunch of regulations. What should we now realistically expect, sir? Yeah, our uh, Ease of Doing Business effort is very comprehensive. It's happening in the central government, state governments, regulators. So rank jump that we have seen so far is significant and it's very uh, motivating. But the amount of work that we are doing is actually amounts to a big movement in the country. So I think we are going to go places, Shireen. Going to go places and that number, as I said, is 50. Uh, what is the broad timeline that you're working with, Namis Abhishek, by when India could actually break into the top 50? See, we would like to break into the... Tomorrow. As well. <laughs> If not today, yeah. But you know, uh, the uh, credibility of the World Bank ranking is because of their rigorous analysis sure. and their evaluation and the integrity of the data. So they have to hear from the users on the ground mm. that things are working. And the rank jump has also happened because they got that feedback. But we have a lot to do. We are doing a lot. So uh, very difficult to predict because other countries are also working hard. But I'm sure that we will get there sooner than later. Well, it is about relative performance, as you pointed out. But if I could ask you, sir, in order of priority now, what are the areas that you're going to be focusing on? What is it that specifically foreign investors now should expect in terms of the areas where improvement is expected? See, some of the areas like, you know, insolvency and bankruptcy code, that's a very important area. And now with the NCLT, NCLT working, we'll have actually some cases that have taken to the logical conclusion. That will uh, lead to a lot of improvement in rank next year. Enforcement of contract is a big deal. So we are going to have more and more commercial courts uh, in Delhi and Mumbai also after the law is suitably changed mm -hmm. for which work is happening. I think enforcing contract is very critical for foreign investors as well. So I think some of these plus procedural you know, uh, simplification in FDI, in uh, many other matters. So that is where the investment facilitation by Invest India and the investor promotion agencies of the states matter. Because till we have complete ease of doing business, we need investments. So that is where Invest India and other investment promotion agencies come in. Since you're talking about investments, let me come to you, Deepak Bagla. At Invest India, you're trying to facilitate investments into the country. We've seen record FDI flows into India. Do you believe that that number is going to be sustainable? Do you believe we can improve on that? And what will we need to do further to ensure that the flow continues to come in? So I think, Shireen, there was a key word which the Secretary mentioned, movement. I think this is just the beginning of the story. And the international investor today has recognized that India is the place to be. In fact, virtually in all boardrooms across the globe, the discussion is not should they be looking at India. The discussion is now moved to how it should be looking yeah. at India. And that's where Invest India comes in because they're looking at somebody who hands hold them through the entire investment process. And that's what in, uh, Invest India is doing right, right from the stages of intent mm. to converting it to investment. Okay, so specifically, if I were to ask you, because if we look at uh, the FDI numbers, Mauritius continues to be right at the top, followed by Singapore. Uh, we're looking for new export markets, but what about new geographies that we're going to tap into in terms of bringing FDI into India? So I think that's very interesting. If you look at the pie chart as we draw it today, it's not that our original players have gone down on the level of investment. In fact, they have increased substantially. But the share of the new ones coming up is very great. And if you're looking at, on a geographic basis, we can look at the planet on the entire east side mm. of it, which is coming in very, very seriously. 
and you're seeing a large level of investment and deal flow coming in from there, including the old ones like Europe and across the Atlantic. But yes, we've got a number of new players. In fact, we've done 100,000 queries so far from 114 countries across 47 sectors. 100,000 queries from 114 countries, okay. Across 47 sectors. Okay. So it's becoming very broad-based today, and that interest has spread across the globe. Okay, it's very broad-based. Uh, Ms. Abhishek, let me ask you, sir, uh, you know, what would be the top five new markets that you think the government, the DIPP, Invest India, etc., will focus on, which could be the new providers of big-ticket FDI into India? You know, the major investments uh, were coming from uh, Mauritius and Singapore because of the tax avoidance treaty, as yeah. you know. Now that is tapering down with the new agreements in place. So I think the major markets and the major countries we are looking at are U.S., of course, mm -hmm. the big uh, uh, source of investment. And uh, Japan has really uh, ramped up almost 60% jump in last one year. And China, of course, we are looking at China, Korea, and European countries. And UAE, another very major country. But there are a whole lot of other countries as well. But uh, some of the countries that I can uh, think of right now are these. We are looking at long-term funds from Canada, for example. Okay. We had a great meeting Pension yesterday. Funds specifically. Pension funds, specifically. Yeah. Absolutely. Actually, we have to make things simpler. We have to facilitate. That is where the, uh, the key is. Foreign investors are very excited. Let me ask some of the foreign investors, and I'd, I'd appreciate it if you could raise your hands and I'll get the microphone across to you. I'll come across to you. Uh, a, what has the experience been so far? Uh, that What is the big difference that you see, perceptible difference that you see on the ground? What more is it that you would like to see the Indian government do uh, to facilitate a greater share of investment into India? Uh, appreciate if you could raise your hands and I'll come across to you. Yes, sir. If you could identify yourself, tell us which sector you belong to and uh, what is your experience so far? What more would you like to see happen? Sure. Uh, hi, this is Amar Varyawa from uh, Vestas Wind Technology India Private Limited. We are from renewable energy sector and uh, we are a Danish company, globally number one, with 85 gigawatt installation. Now, uh, when we decided to put up our manufacturing unit, I mean, we were not sure, uh, you know, whom to approach, how to approach and, you know, uh, when it is going to be possible. And definitely it was a big task for us. Uh, luckily, uh, the Invest India uh, came to our rescue. They, f you know, felicitated us uh, the the step by step process. And as a, as a result, what I can tell you is that uh, within the 15 month of record time, we have put up our uh, full fledged state of the art manufacturing unit in the state of Gujarat. And you know, as you know that you know, to put up any shop like that, uh, you need at least 20 to 25 uh, licenses, clearances, permissions. And uh, uh, some of those licenses are so critical that it can affect your entire lead time of the project. But thanks to uh, the team of Deepak Bagla, they actually helped us uh, on all those critical areas where we were uh, not sure whether the things will go in the right manner. So how much more can we expect you to invest? See, the, now the question is, uh, we have put up a, you know, the blade factory for around a 600 megawatt uh, capacity. Uh, now you know we are waiting for uh, Indian market uh, to you know further uh, improve on uh, the wind sector, uh, and I hope that you know post 2018 the market will uh, bounce back with a, with a major uh, you know installation base, and definitely we will think about it at that point in time. Thank you. So the only thing that's holding you back is commercial viability at this point in time, not so much government clearances or anything of that sort. Okay, all right. Uh, more questions and more comments here. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Arvind Chavla. Uh, I head Uralkali, which is the largest potash miner in the world. It's a Russian company. Uh, we've been in uh, the country for about 12 years, uh, currently in a marketing, trading, outfit kind of a thing, but we've been sitting on the sidelines. It's interesting that I actually moved from Russia to Singapore to India because I believed in India. So the brand India was important for me, uh, and I always pushed it within the company also. And finally, in the last two years, I think with engagement with Invest India, Make in India, all these initiatives, I feel that we have someone to engage with. We've obviously done a lot of government liaison. We've been in touch with the government. Government has always been supportive, especially because the Russia friendship angle and the trade angle. But I think what has happened now is that we have a dedicated team who listens to your problems and I think kind of tries to, like we have a couple of bottlenecks which we discussed at the last CEO uh, forum and I believe that they're already in process where they would be simplified. Okay. So I do believe that I think things are going to go pretty well for India. Well, uh, stakeholder feedback is, uh, is what we're getting here on live television. I'll get one more comment uh, and then come back to you, Secretary. Yes, go ahead. Thanks, Shireen. Uh, I'm Vipul Tuli. I head up uh, Semcorp uh, in India. 
We are an energy company based out of Singapore. Uh, came into India in 2009, so relatively young, eight years for this, for this industry. But we've, uh, as you said, we believe in India and we've actually put our money where our mouth is. We have about uh, between four and five billion dollars of uh, investment in India at the moment. Uh, we are a long-term investor. Um, for us, the biggest belief is the long-term growth potential of India. So we are still at 1,000 or 1,100 uh, units per capita consumption of energy. So we have a long way to go. Uh, Invest India has been fabulous. Uh, for us, I would say it's a friend in the government. Uh, it helps us provide or, or hold up a mirror to the government. Sometimes there are things you can't say as clearly or you, uh, you don't want to say as clearly, and they, they do, I think, a fabulous job in that, so thank you. And uh, at the same time, I, I found them very good also in matching investors to opportunities. So they're constantly at our office saying, okay, what else do you want to do? So we, we invest in renewables, we invest in thermal, we invest in uh, water recycling, et cetera, et cetera. Your last question about uh, uh, what's working well and what could, what could be better, I think the, probably the most palpable thing that's working better is a sense of purpose in the government. So this is a government that picks what they want to do and they get it done. You may or may not always agree with, uh, something will always you know, uh, help some company, or, uh, but it's a sense of purpose. That, that really helps. There's much more transparency. So for an international player, it makes a big difference. Uh, when, you're, when you see level playing fields, you see competitive bidding, you see real earnest resolution of issues. Uh, what could be better? I think the same as, as, uh, as was said here. I think a little bit more focus on long-term sustainability of investments, not just uh, tariffs. Thank, thank you for those comments. And uh, let me come to you, Mr. Abhishek, with the point uh, uh, that we've heard from our investors here. And I think this is specific, for instance, to the renewable energy sector, where the one feedback is that there is an obsession almost with tariff and not with commercial viability or long-term sustainability. How do you address uh, uh, what is being raised as, as genuine, honest feedback from investors? Sir? You know, uh, one of the things that we have been doing uh, rather well in the last couple of years is to get such feedback about every sector, the various policies, whether it's tariff or other regulatory issues, things getting stuck. And then we take up these issues with the concerned ministries or the state governments. You know, there will be always issues or yeah. problems. But the important thing is the engagement. And then our, we take up the issues with those ministries and regulators mm. and try to sort it out. And that's a continuous process. So where are you seeing, sir, still unaddressed issues? Uh, what continues to be the single biggest challenge that you would want to focus your energy and your attention on? Uh, you know, you know, uh, Especially when it comes to the centre state issue, because a lot of the approvals, licences, clearances are not in your hands. They're at the level of the state government's hands. And that's where sometimes uh, you know, problems arise. Actually, one of the things that has happened in the last three years, the states are also having a very strong commitment and sense of purpose. They know that it's a very competitive environment, just yeah. the way it's a competitive environment for the country. So they are also working hard to address all these issues. And our teams are working very closely with the states. Okay. So, it's a so very, there, yeah. there is a coordinated action absolutely, plan? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Let me, in fact, uh, uh, I'll come to you in just one second, sir, and Rajneesh, I'll come to you as well. But let me uh, come to you, Raja, because I want to pick up on this point that the Secretary mentioned here on the competitive federalism that we're seeing and states sort of being uh, in race with one another to try and draw in big ticket investments. What's the experience on the ground? And uh, what more do you believe needs to be done to get this coordinated action to really be aligned? Thank you, Shireen. Uh, so uh, we follow a tripartite method wherein we bring in the state as well as the center in one uh, <clears throat> meeting, uh, wherein the issues and recommendations are, uh, uh, are discussed and resolved in one go. So there is no back and forth movement. Uh, specifically with the state center coordination, from center, DIPP has started something called the BRAP, Business Reform Action Plan, wherein they rate state on 340 parameters. So now, as you mentioned, the competitive federalism part is playing well. States also know that they need to be higher on the ranks so that they attract more investments. So on the state center collaboration, BRAP is something that, that has gone a long way in promoting that, that collaboration. That is good to hear. Rajneesh here representing Walmart India. I know that Walmart has big plans for India. Rajneesh, uh, you are still awaiting some clarification from the government on specific policies like the food retail policy. But broadly, what is it that you, beyond that specific clarification, uh, your bet on India and what more you would like to see?
from a state perspective, and I think I'll, I'll, I'll share an example, sir. Two weeks back, we opened a fulfillment center in Mumbai, which is ready to serve the Mumbai uh, uh, from a B2B perspective. In 60 days flat, you know, we got all approvals, and this is really that uh, sort of uh, a clear example of evidence of uh, a clear, uh, the way uh, the center and the states are working uh, very closely. Okay. And I think this competitive environment is really helping because both states and center and all of us are really on the same page because all of us want to create job yes. and that shared value. So I th uh, we see it on the ground. Okay. And I know sometimes uh, you know the rankings which you see that is a really rare improvement. But on grounds on the states, at least what we have seen, it's actually far more far. Uh, better better than, than what the ranking suggests. The ranking suggests. That's okay, right. that, that, that's good to hear. Uh, yes, sir, you had a comment to make. Let me get you the microphone. You can use that one. Yeah. Yes. My name is Shalin Chet. Uh, I am from uh, TG Advait uh, India Private Limited. I am an equity holder of the company and managing director. Uh, I want to exactly address the issue where he talked about the relationship between central and state government and code uh, When we contacted Make in India first time because we were hearing a lot of boom about Make in India. Mm. So I tried by putting a Google and send a simple email that what they're doing, let me see. Within 24 hours, I got an email. And in next next morning, I got a call from somebody called, called Uday. Uh -huh. That this is, sir, what we can do for you. And the same day, we received a list of approval, which is required to put up a plant in my state. They also mentioned how much time it is going to take. Okay. And since from the day, it was June 2016, now, uh, this time, for any approvals, wherever we are writing any emails, we have been always copying to them. Mm. We are finding that your team is a part of my team. And uh, yes, I want to give this message to investors' community that India mein jo pehle tha ki hota hai, chalta hai, nahi hai. You got somebody who really understands your concerns. Okay. Uh, they have been not only a part of my team, but they have been also supporting me for choosing the right land giving the right policies, and now they're also helping us for giving us the CAPEX support okay. from the MSIPs and the local state level subsidies. So they've got a fantastic knowledge. So where is Uday? Uday, are you here? Well, uh, let, me, let me come to you, Uday. So he says that uh, everything that's happened for him in India is courtesy you. So how did you make it happen? Who do you know in the government? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, especially after the Make in India launch, the change, the attitude change which has come in the government is significant, not at the central level, also at the state level. So even for small projects, states are coming forward and uh, they are thinking of changing policies which have never happened. It's not like a big investor has to come and then they will think, move forward. Even for small things, small policy changes, small investors, they are coming forward and uh, assisting us also. So it's a collaboration between central state and the investors so things are really moving forward very quickly okay well uh, good job and a big round of applause to, to Uday as well but uh, Mr. Abhishek let me come back to you sir because if you look at the data then the services sector continues to attract the highest inbound FDI and that's followed by sectors like telecom etc so when we talk about making India sir, and we talk about manufacturing our aspiration is to take the manufacturing share to 25 percent of GDP we're currently at about 15 16 percent sir uh, what more can be done to ensure that Make in India really gets the takeoff that it needs? Oh, with uh, more and more technologies, Industry 4.0 coming in, you know, the difference between manufacturing and services are also often getting blurred. Now, more and more manufacturers are actually expected to provide services rather than the products. And uh, we actually, our retail market needs to develop. Mm. And a lot of investments are coming in developing the e-commerce and the retail market, which is also very important. Our logistics infrastructure needs to improve so much. So a lot of investments are coming in that area. Okay. So I think all these are getting clubbed into services because sometimes the classification is not so scientific. Okay. But uh, we are getting investments in manufacturing, but more in services, financial services. Right. Another, you know, major artery of uh, our markets and our economy. So I think uh, uh, investors, of course, put their money wherever they find it uh, profitable. But we are pretty happy with the way things are. Okay. Uh, Pai, let me ask you, uh, you know, when you talk to uh, CEOs from different countries, uh, what is it that they're telling you about the sectors that they would like to invest in outside of the obvious sectors? What could be the potential new sunrise sectors, for instance, that could attract foreign investment? Uh, thank you, Shireen. So, um, you know, we have gone for events and roadshows and met a whole lot of investors one-on-one. -on -one. 
And it is heartening to see that it's not just the services industry for which India is typically known for, but also the manufacturing industry, industries like rene renewable, mm. industries like waste to energy, food processing. Okay. You know, a huge... Uh, I, I we think just had the World Food India event. We just had events, the World Food yeah. event. And Deepak, when he spoke about, um, about the sectors and the queries that we are getting in, the predominant portion of that is from food processing, tourism. Okay. Uh, food processing, tourism, renewable, automobile, still the sunrise industry for us. Uh, and a whole lot of questions around um, what are the specific hmm. opportunities that okay. India today has okay. for so, the global world. So since Payal just talked about how automobiles continue to generate excitement and interest, let me ask you, sir, what happened to Tesla? Is Tesla coming to India or See, not? Uh, you know, uh, we welcome all investments in uh, manufacturing, including Tesla. Tesla, Apple, everybody is most welcome. I'm glad you brought up yes. Apple on your own. That was going to be my next question to you. Just so. trying to help your TRPs. <laughs> <laughs> so give me a headline, sir. Tesla, Apple, what's the yeah. story? See, uh, we, uh, people, whoever wants to come, they have to abide by the rules of the game here. Hmm. So if you want to so import... So no relaxation. So you want to import, obviously you have to pay import duty. You want to retail, your single brand retail, you have to do the 30% uh, local sourcing. So all the rules apply to everyone unless you can really show that you deserve any relaxation from the rules. So Tesla and Apple haven't been able to show you that they deserve any no, special not, relaxation? Not yet. not yet. We are working on it. <laughs> not yet. We're working on it. On that note, we're going to take our first commercial break. But don't go anywhere. Things are getting exciting here at the CNBC TV 18 Ease of Doing Business Town Hall in association with Invest India. Back in a moment. Come right back. <laughs> 